In this video, we're going to look at an IBM product called ODM, which stands for Operational Decision Manager. And this is a piece of software that is intended to sort of sit into a larger system. So this, if this is ODM, you're probably already going to have, you almost certainly will have, something around this, which is really your business process management of some kind. And IBM actually makes a product called IBM BPM. And in fact, I, BPM can connect into ODM. But what is the purpose of ODM? What is it? ODM is all about creating rules. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So imagine that you have a, let's do a sort of more practical sort of approach. Imagine that you have a process of some kind and specifically you have a person who is about to apply for credit and you already have a system in place with a series of rules and essentially this is a you have your sort of policy as it's called and the policy consists of rules so you would say if the salary, for example, is over $100,000 and contiguous number of years employed. Let's say that is larger than 10 or greater than 10. Then you can perhaps set credit score equal to some value, maybe it's a high value like 800. Now this is a single rule, but in many organizations, almost all organizations, you could have tens, hundreds, thousands, even hundreds of thousands of rules that are all running together. This is all considered, in this particular case, something called a validation. You would be validating some information. Now ultimately, when this is all said and done, once all these rules are completed, you are going to make a decision, whether it's to approve or to deny this application for credit. So this is your decision. And essentially what we have done here is to create a kind of model of a particular process, a business process, and again, this sort of thing can be modeled in BPM. And again, ODM deals with rules. It deals with this part of that process. The larger process itself, though, is, as I said, BPM, or Business Process Management. And this is actually a screenshot from IBM's BPM. And you can see that they are attempting to model all of the major steps involved from start to end of a particular uh, series of processes. And some of these things may be manual entry or semi-manual, so that here someone is, is entering some information. And here, this is also manual. There's a review process. This is called a coach in the language. And then some of these pieces may also be automated. Actually, quite a bit of these, quite a few of these pieces may be automated, something like uh, this is probably manual, but the check eligibility, that's probably something automated. And if you've watched the previous videos in this series about IIB, you might be wondering, what's the difference between BPM and IIB? And it turns out that if these things, which we know in IIB are called nodes, are automated things, or were automated things, then this would be a candidate for using IIB. But in our particular case here, where these things are mostly manual or human involved, not computers doing this, these sort of tasks, then this is a candidate for BPM. And as it stands, this is these videos are about counter fraud management, and we do not have a license for BPM. However, we do have a license for IIB. And a lot of that is because most of what we're trying to do, the BPM portion of it, sort of the manual portion of, of BPM, is all handled by the CFM application itself, which is really why we have IIB kind of sitting in the middle of, of the CFM or ICFM system.
So you might be thinking, well, what, what's the purpose of ODM? I mean, I know it has something to do with rules, but you know, why would I be using it? Why would it be interesting for me? And the answer is that traditionally, and in most companies, the rules that you use for making decisions are encapsulated or stored in some sort of typically a series of classes, some sort, of, so let's say a uh, programs in some kind of application and very often you have more than one application you're gonna have application one application two and you know each of those applications is going to have these sub components that's why I'm drawing here as classes and then that's only one piece of the puzzle so you could also have an individual expert say Bob here who's an expert in knowing how the rules get applied but notice that his knowledge hasn't really been transferred into any of these other systems here. So it's really just in Bob's head. And separately, you might have just a series of Excel documents or some other set of mm -hmm. spreadsheets or other document that has plenty of rules inside of them. And so the purpose of ODM is to extract out all these rules from all of these various sources into a single point a single place and you can consider that to be a single source of truth if you've heard of that term before SSOT where you take these operational decisions and you you bring them into a single system this is really helpful for things like auditing and logging but also if your typical release process or cycle for your software may be say three months or six months or some other internal system that you have ODM would allow decisions to be made much more quickly by logging into a web page. Business users would log into a, a special web page and they could make changes to smaller pieces of the larger system. So these rules can be pulled out and exposed to a business analyst in a web page and that all can be audited and logged. And not only that, the code that was originally written for these systems uh, here can now be sort of factored out so all they do is they say instead of saying the code itself instead of saying if something then something it can say please go get the if then from ODM and so that you don't need to make changes to the code as soon as there's a new bill or some internal reason to change the rules that you already have. You can simply have, you can centralize, do this kind of single source of truth, this single location here in ODM.